Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again. And welcome to another short installation of things that are not in the Bible. This particular installation has to do with a tradition in the churches that is referred to as touch and agree. Touch and agree. And when people say this in the churches because they don't know the scriptures and they're just repeating the rhetoric that their pastors are telling them, they believe what this means is that if they will touch someone physically, like hold their hand or put their hand on their shoulder or whatever, um, and then pray their prayers, they believe that God is going to hear them while they're touching someone more than God would hear them if they weren't touching someone. And that's kind of a silly thing that people do, and it's also very dangerous, and I want to share that with you by sharing two verses of the scripture with you. So let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. This is my King James Bible, okay? So if you speak English, this is the Word of God. And as we go to Matthew chapter 18, we're going to read verse 19 and verse 20, and it says, Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus said this, and he meant it. But I understand that most people in America don't know how to speak English, and I don't say that sarcastically or tongue-in-cheek or to slander anybody. I'm saying it as a matter of fact. People in America don't know how to speak English. People in America speak American. They don't speak English. And for that reason, when we come to the Holy Scripture, it's kind of hard for a lot of us to understand what the Bible is saying, because the Bible is written in proper English. Okay, It's not written in old English or antiquated English. It's written in proper English. And the reason that it seems old or antiquated to us these days is because we weren't taught how to speak English in the public school system. We were dumbed down and taught how to speak slang and American and not English. And so having said that, the problem is that when we come to verses like this, we don't understand what Jesus means by the word touching. It says, and again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. Now the phrase as touching here doesn't have anything to do with two people physically touching each other at any point in their bodies. What it means is regarding or having to do with, okay? That if two of you shall agree on earth as regarding anything or as having to do with anything that they shall ask, this is what Jesus was saying as touching, okay? If I were to say, well, as touching the matter of the thing that you spoke to me about yesterday, let's come to a decision about that, okay? That's proper English, and that means regarding the situation that we were talking about yesterday, you see? And the fact that a lot of people don't understand English has led to the misunderstanding of that and the ease of the false pastors in the pulpits misusing the, the Word of God and taking advantage of the people's misunderstanding of English, okay, or the lack of understanding of the English language in order to deceive people into silly and, and, and vain traditions. But this is more than a silly and a vain tradition, okay? The, the misunderstanding that is taught by this is more than a silly and a vain tradition. We're going to understand what I mean about that as we go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22. Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, and he said, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. All right? We in the churches are not commanded to lay hands suddenly on anybody. Okay? And, the, you know, the laying on of hands is one of the principles of the doctrine of Christ. It's written in Hebrews chapter 6. It's something that we should be aware of um, and, and understanding of in the very beginning of our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, in the same way that a, a young child learns things in his youth, like tying his shoes and putting his clothes on and buttoning his shirt. Okay, those are things that a little child learns early on in his life, and he should know those things by the time he's, you know, one or two years old. And so, at the same time, we who are Christians ought to know and understand these things, the principles of the doctrine of Christ, in the very beginning of our walk with Jesus Christ, but unfortunately, most people don't. Most people in the churches do not know the doctrine of laying on of hands. They don't know what the Bible teaches about the laying on of hands. And if you'd like to know more about that, there is a playlist on this channel called The Principles of the Doctrine of Christ. And one of those videos is, has to do with the laying on of hands. There's also an epistle on the sword of the Valiant website having to do with that. 
But I digress. The reason that I brought this to your attention is that Paul said, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. And that is to say that if the man standing next to you or the woman standing next to you is a sinner and is not right with God, then you holding that person's hand while you pray or touching that person while you pray is going to be very dangerous to you because it's going to make you a partaker of their sins. You see, look at what Paul said again. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. So you see, this is why the false pastors, the religious entertainers, teach people to touch one another while they're praying because they want to corrupt everybody with the sins of the few. If, if their whole church is full of sinners, if there's any righteous people in their church, they want to corrupt those righteous people by getting them to touch the sinners while they're praying. You see? And it's not that it's a it's a a, a, a purposeful plan of the of the deceived entertainer that is standing in the pulpit. It's the purposeful plan of the devils who have put him there and who have raised him up in a, in a, in a theological seminary and taught him to be a religious entertainer. You see, this is the purpose of the devil, to get people involved in each other's sins and to get the whole church polluted, even as Paul said, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You see, so touch and agree is a silly, baseless religious tradition that people do without ever even thinking about why they're doing it because of a, a ridiculous misunderstanding of one verse of the scripture. And it is a very dangerous practice that gets people involved in one another's sins and gets the sins of the sinners spread throughout all the church, polluting the entire church. And that makes Satan grin sheepishly. So, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, let's not hold hands when we pray anymore. Okay, Let's pray to the Lord Jesus Christ as the scripture commands us to pray and not hold hands with people and not believe the, the lies of those lying pastors who tell us touch and agree because touch and agree is a phrase that is not in the Bible anywhere. It's a phrase that is made up by the religious organizations that are damning the souls of men and causing people to go into that, the, into that broad gate that leadeth unto destruction. So having said that, I digress. This is Brother Clinton and this was another uh, in the series of things that are not in the Bible. May this be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Amen.